Hi everyone, welcome to a brand new Let's Play series I decided to start. For those of you who've been checking out the channel, you know that I made a hype video about Monster Hunter World and let's just say I've been playing it quite a bit since it came out. And part of me, when looking around online, have seen good tip videos and I've seen people trying to do Let's Plays, but I really haven't seen people combine the two and that's what really gave me the idea for this Let's Play. So, this Let's Play is going to be mostly me giving beginner tips that I wish I would have known while playing the game while also showing you guys the game. So today I want to talk about is this game for you? I want to give you guys my idea of who this game is for and you know the kind of things that if you like doing you'll enjoy this game and if you don't like doing them then you know, maybe it's not worth picking up. But hey if you find out this game isn't for you you know this series is here you can go through, watch, and see if it'll interest you. Because, you know, I've had many games that I'm interested in watching. I want to see how they play. But I actually don't like playing them myself. So, and that's the beauty of YouTube and Twitch and all that. So, hopefully you guys will be able to learn something through this series and enjoy watching it. So, let's get started. Here's my main character. As you can see, I've spent quite a bit of time on her. But for this, we're going to do a new game and begin a new adventure. Sisters and brothers of the Fifth Fleet, it's time. I'll keep my farewell brief. Never was much with words. Once you board this ship, there's no turning back. The next ground your feet will touch will be that of the New World. If any of you have lost your nerve, then step away now and let no one judge you. Very well. Then sail safe and strong, and may the Sapphire Star light your way. It's a pretty nice, saw little intro there. Now, for a lot of this game, I'm going to try to cut out the loading screens. They're not that bad, but, you know, I don't have an Xbox One X, so not that quick. So to cut out a little bit of downtime, I'll definitely try to cut those out. Also try to not talk over uh, cutscenes if I can help it, and you know most of them I should be able to. I think it's a nice little way of introducing or kind of getting to see all of the hunters and the palicos walking around. Since I haven't created my character yet, you really can't show me, so I think this is a pretty neat, interesting way of doing it. One thing I will say about this game: one little tiny critique: the voice acting, uh, lip syncing with the voices. Not that great. You'll see what I mean right now. Yo, did you hear? We're almost there. You ready to grab this new world by the horns? Don't know about you, but it feels like ages since I left home to join the commission. So, nervous? Leave you me, I get it. Anything could happen to us, but hey, that's yep. happened. Uh. Hey, aren't you one of the A-list hunters? What? No way! So are we! Hey! Tell us your name! Alright, and now we get to go to the character creator. Now this is actually pretty... pretty darn good, pretty expansive. Gives a lot of different uh, options and a lot of ways to customize, so... You know, I really enjoy it. But I'm gonna cut this part here so you guys don't have to sit there and watch me painstakingly, painstakingly make my character. So, I'll see you guys when I'm done. Alright, after way too long, we have my two characters. Now, I went kind of crazy into this is a Japanese game. I went super crazy anime blue hair on my character. Um, and I put a little cross-shaped scar on his cheek. Kind of a shout out to one of my favorite manga and anime, Roroni Kenshin. So we have Andros on the right. And we have the Palico Stanley, named after my old cat, on the left. So, let's continue on, shall we? So, how about a toast? <laughs> to the A-list! And the commission! Cheers! <laughs> <sighs> so, tell me, what's your theory? The Elder Dragons must migrate to the New World for some reason. <laughs> 
After running the research commission for 40 odd years, the guild's itching for an answer. They say the Fifth Fleet's got the best shot at crack in this case, and I agree. Keep it down. Hey, speaking of, A-listers usually operate in teams of two. Have you sat down with your partner yet? Listen to that. <sighs> Getting rough out there. The waves are picking up. That's gotta mean landfall. You're on the A-list, right? Huh. meow do <laughs> I'm not psychic, but I do have pretty good ears. Ah, put her there. I happen to be an A-lister myself. Oh, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> And now start stuff starts to go terribly, terribly wrong. <clears throat> what you can expect in this game is a lot of cat puns. And personally, I like puns, so they don't bother me too much. Now the handler, she's kind of hit or miss. I don't really hate her. A lot, a lot of people do. She will get really annoying when I'm trying to talk while there's things going on. You'll especially see this um, probably next episode when we're uh, walking around Astera and I'm trying to tell you about things. And she goes, come talk to me. Come do this. Oh no, the Palico! And our little buddy is gone for now. But don't worry, he's not going to be harmed at all. Another thing I want to let you guys know is that the first two episodes of this are going to be a little bland. We're not going to get any action. It's going to be a lot of just kind of walking around. Like I said, I'm going to be talking about if this game's for you once we get to the actual island. And next episode, I'll probably go over a stair and a bunch of different things there because there's a lot to take in. This game has a lot to take in. So by episode three, we'll finally get out on a hunt. So hopefully, you know, things will go great and that'll be the paces we'll go at. But who knows? I want these to be around 20 minute episodes. So hopefully this one and the next one won't go too far over 20. And what do you expect us to do there, Handler? Ship's kinda up in the air on a giant lava thing. And another thing I'm gonna say is the Handler will get you into trouble quite a bit. She is a little quick to act, not to think. Probably getting out of the way is probably the best suggestion she'll have throughout the entire game, at least as far as I've gotten. So, usually if you hear her say something or give ideas, just expect them, expect them to go wrong because, well, they just tend to. Now this big thing here we're climbing is called Zora Magdaros. It's an elder dragon. And it's really what we're going to be focusing on trying to find and trying to understand why it's here throughout most of the game part of the game. And somehow that rock hit me in the head. It's a pretty cool monster that, I'm not going to lie, has some very unfortunate and very anticlimactic fights. At least fights as far as I know. There's still ships out there. I don't think you could die in this part. As you saw before, you can get smacked in the face of these rocks. But since we don't really have a health meter, I'm guessing it's just for effect. Oh, this is actually is another time where the handler does have a good idea. Unfortunately, she really can't uh, back up her own idea, I guess is a good thing to say. You see, this guy's a pretty big boy. Yeah, there, that's her good idea. And as you'll see, she really can't execute her own really good idea. Which is kind of funny. Luckily, our main character actually does stuff. 
So that's pretty nice. Now the story in this game is there. It's not going to be an epic tale like, say, like The Witcher or anything like that. But it's an okay narrative. And honestly, the story mode really is there to help beginner players get into the idea of what Monster Hunter is by slowly drip feeding you hunts that get slightly harder and introduce new elements to you. Like one will introduce, say, a bigger monster. Next one might introduce an enraged mechanic. They might introduce certain status effects. So the game slowly gets you ready for that. And by the end of it, you'll be ready to fight Elder Dragons. So I'm not even there yet myself in my main file, but I can imagine they're going to be very interesting. I've seen some videos and GIFs of people fighting them and they're, they're gonna be interesting, put it that way. All right, we finally landed on the New World in the area called the Ancient Forest, one of the five areas you'll be visiting in this game. And now that we're here, it's time for me to get into what I wanted to talk about, and that is, is Monster Hunter World for you? Now, Monster Hunter World has a very centralized grind to it. A very interesting pool that, if you like it, you'll love this game. If not, it definitely won't be for you. Now, what I mean is, the core concept of this game is find monsters to kill or capture them, get their parts, out of those parts, make new weapons and new armor, and use those to kill even bigger, badder monsters. So, that's really it. That's the grind. But, if you're someone who enjoys that kind of stuff, it's really, really satisfying. Like I said, a lot of the loot you will be getting is mostly parts of monsters. However, there are also things to forage, like mushrooms, herbs, bugs, a lot of different things you can walk around that you can grab. And every area has their own different amounts of those things. Like in this area, you'll see a lot of herbs is the beginning area. So there's a lot of those around but you might not see certain kind of bugs you know on this part of the map but if you go higher up you might find them in diff different areas like thunder bugs and flash bugs on, a lot of those are very common in the wild spire waste while they are here they're more common there at least that i've seen now as you can imagine from what i've explained this game is a bit repetitive so if you don't like repetitive games this game might not be for you, but if you're someone who enjoys that, this game will be, you know, will uh, fulfill that for you. If you like going out, getting rewards, getting new armor, getting new items over and over again, it will be a game that you'll definitely enjoy. I know a lot of people who enjoy Destiny, at least Destiny 1, are coming over to this game and having a good time. Because, you know, they have that want for loot and gear and rewards and this game has that in droves well there's only i believe 30 or so monsters in this game you know each one has their own armor set and when you get to high rank they'll actually have two different armor sets but that's i'll get into that way down the line when we get there i was to say there's a lot to make a lot to do and this game is a time sink it's not going to be a game you pick up play for maybe 10 hours and you're done now this this game has a lot of uh, meat to it. The story mode itself, people are saying, clocks around 40, 50 hours, and I'm there already on my main file, and I've just been grinding out low-level gear, which you really shouldn't do, which I didn't know, but uh, <laughs> if you do want to do that, you can. But So your mileage will vary, but it does tend to take quite a while. It's going to be something that you'll be playing for quite a bit, and you'll get your $60 worth, let me tell you that. You will also like this game if you like rewarding combat, because that's one thing this game definitely has. You have 14 different weapons, which I'll get into next episode, and they all feel very different, and they have different weight to them. So, certain weapons you want to have better positioning than others. Certain ones are faster, certain ones are ranged. And the combat is very rewarding. You no, know, there's nothing like getting stuck on a monster and eventually going through and beating it and that feeling of satisfaction 
the reward of knowing you got good enough to beat it is just awesome. And I really, really do enjoy it. If you're someone who enjoys, you know, player growth over just leveling stats and skill trees and perks and stuff like that, you'll definitely enjoy this game. Because your character actually doesn't really level up at all throughout the entire game. The only increase to your player is by your base attack and defense stat through armor sets and gear and you can have some modifiers with skills that come with the armor and the weapons. But really, you don't like increase your attack plus one for leveling up. Nothing like that happens. It's all based on your learning as a player and your growth in combat as a player. No, you know, stat building or skill tree building affects how much better you get as a player. It's just your experience and your armor. That's it. Another thing about this game is there's a lot of micromanaging items. And I'll get to that in either episode 2 or maybe a little bit later. Because we won't have that many items on hand to begin with. And there is a bit of micromanaging. So if you don't like micromanaging, it might turn you off a bit. But, you know, if you watch this and see, you'll see how it can get. And honestly, they do a good job at helping take the frustration out of micromanaging things. They really do. Now, do they do the best job explaining it? Mm, not so much. But that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to help you guys understand it better. All right, now we just saw a part there where we were hiding from a monster and it's something that's very useful. It's something that I always forget to do. If you're ever in a tough hunt and there's grass and stuff that you can crouch in, it's a good time and good place to be able to heal and stuff like that. So that's really useful. And also you saw me jump off that cliff there. There is no fall damage in this game. So if you can do it, jump off the cliff. It leads to some really cool moments and some really, really crazy things that have happened. Trust me. What is this trap? Now up here, she's going to introduce the scout fly mechanic, which is what we use to track monsters. It's very important that you track monsters and fill the little bar you'll see when we do an actual hunt as much as possible. It really is useful, and I will talk about that more when we get to our first hunt. Now earlier I mentioned drip feeding you monsters. Well, this opening cutscene, opening sequence does a good job to it. We saw little Jagras, who are, aren't really threats. We now can see a great Jagras, who really wants us for dinner, but will end up being pretty much a pushover by the time we beat him, honestly. Now we have our super badass first team leader. And shortly here we're going to see someone who's a little bit more of a threat and actually probably the first wall for players when they first start this game. He's going to be the real first true tough challenge. And actually he's one of the people that introduces you to elemental damage and enrage mechanics. And Janath. <laughs> As you can see, he just tosses the great jaggers around like it's a chew toy. All right, we're getting close to the end here for our first episode. Hopefully this game has piqued your guys' interest and hopefully you know, you watch this and come away with a better understanding if this game is for you or not. Now, I'm gonna try my best to give you guys as much knowledge as I can that I've learned throughout playing this and hopefully make it an entertaining experience because this game really is a lot of fun. Amazing, ain't it? Just look at this gate. It's like nature meant for us to build a stara right here. A stara. I like it. <laughs> the rest of the fifth are already here. You're the last to arrive. Still for a bit. Hey, you guys made it. Be right back. You're alive. Had <laughs> a rough, huh? Hey. When we couldn't find you two, we were starting to sweat bullets. You scared us. We were talking about going out to look for you. 
<laughs> All's well that ends well. <sighs> hey, we need a hand. Sorry. Hey, Come on. <laughs> Catch you later. <laughs> This here's our trade yard. I guess the name says it all. Look at all the people. The stuff. Incredible. Right? <laughs> We've got it all here. We've got hunters to do all the exploring. Scholars to do the research. Technicians to keep them going. This place is the beating heart of the commission. Wait here a sec. Commander, I found him. Welcome to Astera. Right, one thing I do want to ask you guys is if you want me to read the text or just have it go on the screen to you guys can read it, I'm not really sure I'm not the best narrator, so you know I'm just going to let it go across the screen now as it is. But if you'd like me to in the future, please let me know down in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to do that. Alright, as this opening sequence here ends up and we get control of the player character again, I'll end the episode and that'll be it. Alright, I hope you guys have enjoyed this and I'll talk to you guys later. Well, off you go. Okay, I'll give you the grand tour. Let's start by looking for your palico. This is our stockpile. They carry most of the basic necessities. You should drop by later to see what they have. 